Good morning, everyone. Um, I see people are um, already connecting to the webinar. So welcome everyone to this uh, webinar, this recycling of plastics towards a more sustainable plastic treatment in 2030. Um, we will give just a couple of minutes uh, to start this webinar. I see people are still connecting. So let's wait a couple of minutes more uh, to give enough time to people to connect in case anyone is experiencing problems uh, with their networks or so. If someone maybe is experiencing problems with the connection, we uh, certainly uh, advise you to try to do it uh, through the browser uh, instead of using the Zoom uh, app uh, because uh, it uh, usually gives problem to connect. So if you can try to connect through the browsers, if you know anyone who's experiencing problems to connect, please tell them that uh, they could use uh, instead the browser uh, with a link to connect and that uh, should be working. Well, I think maybe we can start now. Um, Welcome again to this uh, Recycling of Plastics webinar towards a more sustainable plastic treatment in 2030. Uh, through uh, today's session, we will be having uh, several presentations uh, for uh, two hours, but obviously we don't want uh, to just keep it in presentations. This is an interactive session and we certainly uh, would like you to participate as much as possible. Uh, I don't know if you are familiar with the Zoom platform. Uh, we will uh, provide you a couple of instructions now uh, on the presentation, just for you to, to know um, what's expected from this session. Um, the first thing that I would like to say is uh, to introduce myself. Uh, my name is Mariana Fernandez. Uh, I'm Head of Communications at Sustainable Innovations. And today I will be uh, welcoming this session and, and trying to introduce our panelists and uh, obviously to uh, uh, encourage you to participate as much as possible uh, and to try to give this session uh, a smooth um, uh, participation. Um, probably you are wondering if this session is going to be recorded and available uh, afterwards. Yes, it certainly is. Uh, we are recording the session and it will be uploaded uh, to the project's website afterwards. So if you are not able to participate during the whole session, you will have uh, the session available on the project websites. And we will uh, send you a follow up email with all that information. Um, a couple of instructions just to, to keep it uh, clear. Uh, please don't activate your microphone or video cameras uh, unless uh, we give you uh, the permission. So uh, you can see now on the screen the main panelists that we will be speaking uh, today. Um, uh, another instruction is uh, if you are willing to participate, as I uh, mentioned before, this is not just presentations. We would like you uh, to uh, participate with us and to um, ask uh, as many questions as possible. Please raise your hand so we uh, can um, activate your, your mic and you can uh, ask your question. Obviously, uh, you have also the possibility to uh, ask your questions through the chat. Uh, a brief uh, summary of uh, what we'll be doing uh, today. As I said earlier, uh, we have uh, five presentations uh, today. We will be going through several ways uh, of uh, recycling plastics, of the future technology of recycling plastics. The first presentation of the session will be uh, the Nontox project. Uh, our uh, main speaker will be Mohamed Saad uh, Qureshi. He is a senior scientist 
at BTT, and he's also the coordinator of uh, the Nantox project, a project addressing um, uh, some technologies uh, mainly uh, based on uh, recycling hazardous plastics. Then we will go uh, through uh, the next presentation. Uh, this is the Plus to Be Clean project. The Plus to Be Clean project aims at recycling uh, ABS and HIPS, bromine and antimony trioxide from uh, waste electrical and electronic equipment plastics. Uh, this will be led uh, uh, by Esther Sonderman. Uh, she is senior consultant plastics at TNO and also the Plus to Be Clean coordinator. Following this presentation, we will be having uh, Irma Mikonsari, project manager at Fraunhofer Institute and a coordinator of the CREATOR uh, project. The CREATOR project uh, is addressing uh, this plastic recycling by the collection of raw materials and removal of flame retardants. Next presentation will be uh, led by Thomas Diefenhardt, Associate Scientist at Fraunhofer uh, IVV, sorry, and Circular Flooring Coordinator. The Circular Flooring Coordinator, the Circular Flooring Project, sorry, um, aims at recycling PVC from post-consumer flooring waste. And the final presentation of the session, and then we will go uh, to this uh, panelist uh, conversation, uh, we will be having the project uh, REACT. REACT uh, addresses the management of waste acrylic textiles coming from outdoor awnings and furnishing. And this presentation will be uh, led by Roberto Banucci, a multi-sectoral uh, R&D department manager. Finally, as I said uh, before, uh, the idea uh, is to have an interactive discussion between the panelists. And based on the questions you are going to ask us, uh, between the sessions, I didn't introduce that, but you can uh, anytime ask questions and we will be uh, addressing those uh, to the speakers so they can uh, answer them afterwards. Uh, if there are many questions that are finally not going to be able to uh, answer them during this session, we will compile of the, all of them and try to uh, provide an answer after the session. Finally, as I uh, said before, we have five projects addressing the plastic uh, recycling challenge. Uh, over there, uh, you have uh, more information. We certainly invite you uh, to follow all those projects uh, through their websites uh, and social media channels, uh, but we will provide those information during the presentations. So it's easier for you uh, to follow um, the channels. And uh, now I will mute myself. Uh, so I uh, leave the floor to the first speaker. Um, but before we do that, um, we would like to uh, know more what um, are your interests uh, in this webinar and how familiar are you with uh, this webinar topic? So a couple of questions for you, just to answer how familiar are you with the webinar topic? just for us to know uh, if you are an expert in plastic recycling or is it the first time uh, that you um, encounter this, this challenge in a technical way. We will give a couple of seconds for you to answer those questions. Okay, I hope uh, you already answer um, that questions. Now I will leave the floor uh, to Mr. Mohamed uh, Sad Qureshi, uh, senior scientist at BTT, and he will be uh, speaking about uh, non-tox. Uh, thank you very much and see you later. So yeah, hello, good morning. I hope you are able to hear me well and and see the presentation. So yeah, my name is Mama Saad Qureshi and uh, I work as a senior scientist in VTT. And today I'm going to be telling you more about uh, what is non-tox project and uh, 
what are what what are the toolbox of these technologies that that we are we are using to, uh, to basically recycle the the hazardous plastics in general. Uh, the agenda of my presentation is basically that I'll go through very shortly what is non talks about what is the challenge that we are trying to target and how we are going to address that challenge so basically the non talks concept and what are the potential impacts that we that we aim to create with the uh, with the widespread technologies that we are uh, that we are developing in the non talks project and then some some words about uh, what are the policy recommendations that we have identified with the with the with our investigation into the into the framework of the of the of the legislations and regulations so yeah to the next slide uh, this is briefly how non tox is um, is composed. Basically, it's uh, it has a budget of approximately five million euros, and the duration of the project is from two thousand nineteen to two thousand twenty two. And uh, we have approximately twelve partners uh, from seven European countries, uh, including players from all the different parts of the value chain in in the whole concept. So we have a collection scheme to so the manufacturer representative Arian from Italy. Then we have waste treatment plants from Sweden, Estena, Coolrec from Netherlands, Tree from Italy, and Gallia Polymers from Spain. Then we have research technology organizations participating in non tox um, and those are Fraunhofer from, from Germany, IMDIA from, from Spain, Iamplast from Spain, VTT from Finland and Norway uh, is participating with, with Norner. And then we also have two, two universities involved in this project. So University of Van Vitelli from, uh, from Italy and Alta University from Finland. So uh, what is basically this challenge? We uh, basically we want to save these valuable plastics which are now sent to incineration or landfills. But if you look at the whole picture, how much actually is 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 this uh, is this plastics that we are after? How much is the potential waste that is sent to incineration each year in Europe? That is the, the, the one of the biggest questions. If you um, press the the pointer, there is these animations. So, how do we get to new products from these waste materials? So that is that is the question. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah, can you press that bit again? So that 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 is the question. So so we are looking at the toolbox of different technologies that that we can be using to uh, valorize this this um, this plastic waste which is going to incineration currently. So approximately we have estimated approximately 3.5 million tons of of plastics plastic waste coming from these these streams are currently now mistreated in in, in Europe each year. Now, if I talk about a little bit more about what's what is the the solution or the concept that non tox is developing, so we are, uh, as you can see it on the screen, here is the the scheme of the non tox. We are looking at three different uh, as the, the three different waste streams, including um, waste electrical and electronic equipment, equipment, uh, construction and demolition waste, and end of life vehicles, and particularly the plastics from from these streams. The first step in this um, in this value chain is is the sorting. So how how do you basically sort the different types of the polymers and how do you classify them in between what is recyclable and what is not recyclable and what kind of impurities do these plastics contain? So if you press that pointer, yeah. So this is this this is the first let's say the tool in the toolbox of technologies. So this is where we are developing at VTT an intelligent sorting of, of the different polymers using active hyperspectral uh, sensing technique in which we can classify the plastics containing bromines or the flame retardants in them. So the next step from this sorting is, is, there, is the recycling technique. And in which, in this box, you see that there are a couple of these technologies called Creosol technology and extra clean technology, which we call as physical and mechanical recycling technologies. And these are the ones that, that are the core technologies used for the recycling of hazardous plastics. And Fraunhofer at, uh, in Germany and Ironplast in Spain are look at looking at these, these technologies for recycling of, of, uh, 
of the plastics containing flame retardants. Uh, now, as you can see that from the main recycling uh, box, there are there are there there is basically one arrow going towards thermochemical conversion, which is basically the non-target plastic waste fractions. So if we broadly, uh, broadly classify the plastics, we can say that they are the ones that, that are suitable for the for this recycling technology in creosolve and extra clean, but then there are the ones which contain uh, contaminants uh, in um, which are which are basically not suitable for these technologies. So so those non-target plastic fractions are still treated with thermochemical conversion technologies, and of course also the the byproducts and residues coming from the main recycling technologies are directed to the thermochemical conversion technology. In this case, it's it is the pyrolysis. And uh, the pyrolysis is, is, the, is a core technology which is now treating the most difficult residues and it's developing at MDI in Spain and VTT in, in Finland. So with the thermochemical conversion technology, you can convert the plastics into valuable hydrocarbons. Uh, the, the, the arrow coming down from the main recycling technology are basically the, the recycled plastics, which can then be upgraded with uh, the use of uh, special additives to to get to a point where, where these plastics can be used in high quality applications. So as you can see that we finally, we can finally go to uh, applications where uh, virgin like properties are needed. So the recycled plastics from these technologies can compete in, 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 a, in a very good manner with, with, uh, with the virgin like, virgin like materials. So this is how we are trying to close the loop of the of the of the plastic waste by not letting any of the plastics uh, move out of this of this uh, whole value chain to the next and then if i talk briefly about what are the potential impacts that we estimate are uh, yeah the potential impacts from the non tox so we see that approximately we we are able to recycle with this concept approximately more than 2 million tons of 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 these these type of plastics each year in europe and then the next one is we estimate that approximately up to 74% increase can be can be estimated in the recycling capacity in europe with the use of these non tox technologies and then we can also assume that uh, with, with our approximations that approximately 2 million tons of uh, greenhouse gas emissions can be can be avoided. Uh, we also we also believe that approximately threefold increase in jobs can be can be uh, can be seen with the with the use of the non tox concept in the recycling sector. Uh, then I talk a bit briefly also about the about the policy recommendations. So in in, in the non tox project, we uh, we had the we had the task to basically investigate the the landscape of the different regulations and frameworks and directives that are basically encompassing the whole non tox concept and uh, uh, how the waste how this these type of plastic waste is currently handled and what are the uh, relevant legislations that uh, basically affect the the whole value chain so we have looked into different uh, regulations um, pop regulations reach regulations we have looked into you know ross uh, criteria so by uh, after looking at all this uh, great landscape of uh, regulations directives frameworks we have been we have been trying to identify the gaps and the and in in the current um, uh, landscape and and providing us also uh, with the with the recommendations how to move forward with uh, with with such directives in the future so that maximum plastics uh, can be can be recycled and the one and the most important findings from this is from from this investigation is that we we found out that for example the current eco design legislations they basically promote energy efficiency rather than material efficiency so the processes are basically designed to conserve energy but material efficiency is has been missing so that that is also one of the key elements for the future that uh, in in the future you know eco design legislations that could be one of the one of the aspect that can be high, highlighted the introduction so uh, sorry can you go back yes the introduction of the end of waste criteria for for plastics 
is, is, is another bottleneck in, in this whole concept. And um, such you know, introductions of this end of phase criteria will basically harmonize the, the EU markets. The key policy messages that we want to also give from, from, from our investigation is that eco design directives should also basically include aspects related to recyclability, which is basically that you design for and from recycling. And uh, that is also one of the key, key things. In, uh, in future uh, activities in the, in the non-talks, we are still looking at uh, development of a, of a report based on the eco-design criteria for developing guidelines, especially for ELV, V and construction and demolition uh, waste. And then we are also working on a report uh, for the actions to basically uh, classify what are the actions that are needed to enhance the circularity uh in in um, yeah in, in this um scenario with the with the hazardous plastics and then the ne the next slide is basically uh, can you go to the next slide please yes this is this is uh just introducing to the to the non talks website where where we have lots of materials to be to be downloaded there is different deliverables that we have produced in the non-tox project that you can you can visit the visit, visit the website and you can download this these uh, these reports uh, comprehensive reports for example procedures for safe working with these contaminated materials how the how the feedstock is uh, you know distributed in europe of such type so mapping of feedstock then you can also subscribe to our our, our newsletter and get information on the on the progress of the of the project so basically that was i think all from uh, the short presentation of non talks and thanks for the attention if you have any question please um, yeah go ahead thank you very much uh, mohammed uh, this was quite a, an interesting presentation um, I saw we have uh, a question, but uh, before we go uh, through that questions, we uh, would like to remind that uh, this is an interactive session. So please send us uh, your questions through the through the chat. You can also raise your hand in case you would like to talk um, out loud. Um, so please keep in mind this uh, is an interactive session. So we wouldn't like uh, for you to to be curious about anything. And finally, uh, don't ask your questions. The question that I was going to ask to uh, Mr. Mohamed is: um, uh, After seeing your presentation, uh, I see a challenge here on how soon uh, this technology of uh, the non-tox concept. Do you think when we it be could uh, be commercialized. So basically, we, uh, we are not looking in non tox in technologies which are really new. Uh, the reason I'm saying is that, for example, Creosolve technology is already now in a, in a demonstration phase. Pyrolysis technology is a very developed technology. The, the, the challenge actually has been in the in the non tox project is how we can use these technologies to basically serve the purpose of removing these hazardous substances. So I believe that, that the, the, te the technologies are quite, quite ready for, for commercialization in a few years. Is, and uh, with the non-tox project, we will be able to uh, give the proof of concept that uh, these technologies can well serve the purpose of this. And um, yeah, I think the, the, the technologies are quite, quite ready for the next step. Thank you very much. Uh, we also saw that uh, you um, present uh, those challenges uh, regarding the policy uh, implementation. Usually it's a common um, challenge for all uh, the projects uh, that are uh, addressing these innovative solutions. Um, do you think uh, this is important to put something in common between the projects to, to address those uh, policy recommendations? This is definitely very important, and I think uh, with the help of this cluster, with the with the with the projects working together, I think uh, we will be able to make. Hopefully, we'll be we will be able to make a joint uh, statement or joint policy brief in which we can we can you know uh, we can identify what are the what are the key 
key aspects in in the current legislations that needs to be you know changed for a better future thank you we have uh, still a couple of questions more thank you for uh, participating so actively um we have uh, technical questions here uh, does eight AHS allowed to sort by polymer and uh, brominated flame retardants, uh, SB, uh, BB, uh, et cetera, content? Sorry, I, I didn't understand the question. Can you please say that again? Yes, yeah, sure. Does AHS, sorry, AHS allowed to sort by polymer and brominated flame retardants, et cetera? Uh, do you mean the active hyperspectral? Yes, we are developing this this technology, and so far I can say that we uh, we are through the mid, mid of the project, and we have been able to uh, we have been able to achieve the efficiency up to eighty percent in uh, classifying um, brominated flame retarded plastics. Yes, and we are still still progressing with the technology and making it even better. Thank you for your answer. And one last question, and we move on to the next presentation. Uh, there's a participant uh, uh, who's saying that uh, he missed details on how much plastic from the feed soak can be recycled into secondary plastics, and how much today is already recycled in order to detect the untouched potential. So uh, currently, the, the 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 current state of art is that brominated flame retarded plastics up to a certain threshold is sent to incineration so it's not recycled at all that is why the why why the non tox and other projects now exist today that we want to develop solutions to save this plastic these plastics they are not recycled today because they contain these legacy additives and uh, uh, i think with the help of these technologies being developed in these projects we will be able to get back into circular economy a big share of plastics that is now 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 sent for incineration and, and landfilling thank you very much again i see that uh, there are more questions uh, as we are running out of uh, time uh, regarding the presentations time slot that we have defined we will try to answer them uh, after the presentations thank you very much muhammad we Thank will you. now move on to the next uh, presentation led by uh, Esther Sonderbrand, uh, Program Manager at TNO and coordinator of the Plastic Clean Project. Esther, uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. So uh, my name is Esther Sonderbrand and I will present uh, the Plastic Clean Project. Next slide, please. And uh, what is important is that the overall aim of Plastic Be Cleaned is to develop a human and environmentally safe recycling process for the waste, electrical and uh, electronic equipment, the so-called weed plastics. And this should be done in a technical feasible and also in an economic viable manner. So, and that, of course, in a sustainable way. And uh, by doing the Plastic Be Cleaned uh, project, we are closing three loops. And that is the loops of the polymer, the bromine, and the antimony trioxide. And in this picture here, that is uh, the, there's presented how we do it in doing that. So we start with the development of a mechanical pre-sorting uh, technology, which is based on, uh, on Raman and Lips. We closing the three loops uh, for the dissolution technology. So those uh, plastics that contain brominated flame retardants, they are going uh, to the dissolution um, uh, facility. And there we uh, work on the superheated conditions. And that means that we uh, work just above the boiling point of, uh, of the solvent. And then we can separate the polymer, the bromine, and the antimony trioxide. And we're doing that for HIPS and ABS uh, coming from B plastics. Uh, then the next step is the scale up uh, and integration of all those, uh, those steps for uh, separation of the three uh, uh, components, polymer, bromin, and antimony trioxide. Uh, then, of course, we do the performance testing of the products and, uh, and the process, so check if they comply with the REACH legislation. And this, uh, we're doing that also of all everything from a point of five, the system optimization for sustainability and economic viability. So actually point five is not really at the end of the process. We continually checking all those steps if they are sustainable and economic viable. Next slide, please. 
So uh, Tino is coordinating of this project and we are doing this not alone, we're doing this with the research institutes, Fraunhof and Geiker. And what is important is that we connect the whole value chain to this, uh, to this project. So Coolrec as a recycling uh, company, uh, UCAM uh, for the engineering, uh, so, so the process uh, equipment. Uh, then we have uh, Elex as a plastics producer, producer of ABS, uh, Electrolux as end user of the, uh, of the plastics, uh, ICL uh, for the uh, bromine recovery, and also the connection to the chemical industry. And uh, for the antimony uh, recovery, we have uh, Campina on board. And uh, of course, we have uh, sustainable innovations for the dissemination expert an exploitation in which do, uh, does Mariana today already an excellent job. So next slide, please. So here you can see uh, the whole consortium people are all working on this uh, on this project. In the pre-COVID time, so we could uh, meet each other uh, together at, uh, at Fraunhofer ICT in Germany. And then the next slide. And here you see what uh, the impact is, what we would like to gain uh, this place to be printed. We would, we have a desire recovery yield of, uh, of above 80 percent and uh, this means that we can increase in Europe uh, the uh, recycling rate of weed plastics uh, with eight percent. So 40 percent uh, reduction compared to um, the um, uh, to the methods that is uh, to the incineration which is now used for the uh, uh, plastics uh, uh, end of life um, and, um, and what is important is that I already said we are closing three loops. So not only from the polymer, but also from the antimony and the polymer flame retardants. And this should end up in uh, profitability for the, uh, for the chemical uh, sector. Next slide, please. So here you can see the progress of, the, of this project. So uh, first, uh, we, as I already uh, show you uh, by the scheme, we start with the, uh, with the sorting uh, techno, uh, technique. And uh, there we worked uh, mainly on uh, to identify all colored polymers, including the black ones, which is really one of the challenging uh, issues uh, nowadays. And that we are doing for, uh, for HIPS and ABS. So what we are now, how far we are we now? We set up our equipment. Uh, we made a library also, and uh, we are now optimizing for the uh, for the colored and for the uh, for the dark uh, samples. And this is uh, this is ongoing uh, research. So then the next slide, please. So uh, this is uh, then uh, the next step for the uh, dissolution uh, technology in which we are going to recover the polymer. That antimony trioxide and the, uh, and the BFRs. And uh, this is currently running at, uh, at lab scale, scale and we are uh, preparing to scale up to a TRL 556. Uh, five, so uh, at lab scale, uh, we are now at uh, at about 100 gram uh, scales. And uh, we started with, uh, with the preparation of test samples with known composition. And that we did typically uh, made a variation of the sample. So both HIPS and ABS were used and uh, there are soluble uh, bominated flame retardants and insoluble bominated flame retardants. So we use both flame retardants to uh, check our, uh, our process. And then the next slide, please. And here you can see some of the uh, of the process. So on the left side, that is uh, the uh, stamy batch uh, processes at, at 100 gram scale. Uh, right is uh, at Fraunhofer ICT, and at currently we are setting up a larger uh, facility at Fraunhofer ICT, which is uh, up to one kilogram uh, sample that can be uh, can be prepared. And then the next slide. Here you can see some uh, some results of this uh, of this project. Uh, what we see is already that uh, that the project um, is is doing it quite well. So the uh, the bromine reduction uh, we almost reach uh, the target, which is uh, which is very very good. And also for antimony, the target is uh, is reached. So for bromine, uh, we we need. A bit, uh, just a bit better, but I'm sure that we can uh, do that in the in the coming uh, in the coming months. So we made uh, based on the these experiments we did uh, so far, and that is uh, over 250 experiments. Uh, we made our process flow diagram for the for the demonstrator, which is currently be, being built, and we checked all the junctions what we have to uh, make a decision about. And then the next slide, please. 
So uh, as I already said, we do not only look at, at, at the technical issues of this process, but also for the economic and environmental assessment. And uh, from the economic assessment, uh, we already see that, that this is process is in principle economic viable. And uh, also from a sustainability uh, perspective, we, uh, we looked at the, uh, at the impact uh, for the environment, and we did that in uh, in two ways. Uh, we we did we looked at the, at the product uh, from the product perspective. As you can see there on the the lower picture, uh, one is the is the door uh, from a washing machine, and uh, the other one is the uh, the inner uh, inner liner from a, a refrigerator cabinet. And that is from the cross, uh, product perspective and also from the waste uh, perspective, we just looked at the end of life treatment of one ton of free plastics and then uh, compare it to an uh, incineration, which is uh, done currently. So then the next slide, please. And here you can, uh, can see uh, some of uh, the first uh, results. So we're now performing an in-depth uh, life cycle as, uh, assessment, this, but this is uh, just from the, from the scan. And there you see that, that we see uh, a clear improvement uh, by doing this, uh, by, by using um, uh, the plants to be cleans process uh, for hips and ABS. So this is the, uh, the, the comparisons of, uh, of the uh, uh, bromine, brominated hips and brominated APS uh, compared to the municipal waste incineration and that is with energy recovery. And here we looked only to the uh, to the polymer, but we should also we look now also in the in-depth scan also to the uh, benefits of the bromine and of the antimony trioxide. Next slide, please. So then uh, I'm coming uh, to the end of the, my presentation and I would like to finalize where I started with. I think with Plus to be Cleaned, we are very good on our way to, uh, to develop a nice process uh, for the uh, mechanical sorting uh, technology. So the sorting of the different types of plastics and do they contain brominated flame retardants or not. Then closing the three loops for the plastics that contain brominated flame retardants for the polymer bromine and antimony trioxide. The scale up to, uh, to TL5 6 scale uh, performance uh, testing. So, do they com uh, comply with the REACH legislation? And that all from an economic and environmental sustainable uh, way. So, then the next uh, slide, please. If you uh, would like to uh, have more information, I would like to invite you to look at uh, our website, www.plastobeclean.eu. Uh, follow us at LinkedIn or at, uh, at Twitter, and you can also subscribe for our newsletter. So thank you for uh, your time. Thank you, Esther. Uh, very interesting presentation indeed. Uh, I saw that we have several questions on the screen. I will try to keep those uh, till the end of the um, uh, presentations because they are more focused on addressing all the panelists uh, because they are general uh, questions for all uh, the presentations. But uh, regarding the presentation, Esther, we have uh, a question. Uh, an LCA, a life cycle uh, analysis, is usually a, a challenge because there are several methodologies implemented uh, along the, the projects. Do you think that a common methodology will help the analysis of uh, uh, the life cycle costing and to put in common uh, the, the discoveries for for the projects. So um, I think uh, both uh, environmental assessment and the uh, life cycle costing that is important uh, for the project. Uh, life cycle costing is of course uh, important uh, because then uh, you know whether there is an economic benefit and uh, at least you when you are going to scale up at, at, at higher scale you need also investment of investors. So so you need to have a business case how you can uh, uh, make uh, business at the end of, of this and. Uh, of course, uh, when we are making new uh, technology, uh, then we should um, be sure that it is uh, also sustainable. Because if you cannot prove that, then uh, we going then then yeah, the chances that, that that you go from one um, now from incineration, which has also some benefits, because we can do the energy recovery and we can uh, do some heat recovery for, from that. But it should be better than what we have now. 
Thank you very much much uh, Esther we will continue with those uh, questions we received during the panelists uh, session we will move uh, on the next presentation uh, this is a presentation about the collection of raw materials uh, removal of flavor retardants and uh, that will be done by Irma Mikonsari from Hofer Institute for Chemical Technology thank you very much Irma for joining us today uh, the floor is yours Thank you, Mariana, for the kind introduction. Yes, um, I'm um, honored to present you today the CREATOR project and what we aim for there. Um, I said I'm Irma Mikonsari, coming from the Fraunhofer Institute for Chemical Technology. Um, you can keep, give me the next slide, please. So I will guide you in this session um, through the CREATOR project. Um, firstly, um, telling you what we aim for in the project in the removal of hazardous materials and then coming um, to our status in the moment in the project, what we have achieved so far, and then uh, conclude with um, how our results are impacting the circular economy in Europe. Next slide, please. So this is um, how the CREATOR project works and what we are aiming for. As the projects um, already shown before, non-tox and plus to be clean, we are also looking on the removal of hazardous materials from thermoplastic materials, and specifically on those um, legacy flame retardancies containing bromine. So where we start is the collection of the waste, and we do consider three different waste streams, one coming from the uh, construction and demolition waste. They are looking on the um, EPS foams, then we have the waste stream coming from the electrical and electronic equipment. We were also looking on the, the APS. And then uh, the third stream coming from the aeronautic industry where we are looking on PC thermoplastics. Those materials then enter the um, separation and recycling step um, where we um, have a um, new uh, identification step using the LIPS technology as does the Plaster Be Clean project as well. So the laser-induced uh, breakdown spectroscopy to uh, detect the bromine-containing parts and the non-bromine-containing parts. And those containing bromine are then fed into our um, purification step where we do and continuous extraction to remove those prominated frame retardancies in an extrusion line using environmental friendly uh, supercritical CO2 and NADIS liquids. Then having those non-prominated um, fractions, we do label them for the later application um, consisting in saying what content of bromine we do still have. And then of course, giving the applicants um, further um, key performance indicators. So what the performance of that material is, um, for example, concerning the mechanical behavior or uh, viscosity, what is very relevant for the later processing. And then we go even a step further to show how those materials can be reused. And for that, we do uh, remodificate the materials concerning the needs of three different sectors. On the one hand, we are looking for automotive interior uh, parts in injection molding. Then we have, uh, once again, where we really close the loop, bring back the PS as an EPS to insulation panels in the building and construction sector. And then we aim for um, brackets in the aeronautics sector as well, which are 3D printed. This whole uh, process chain um, also aiming for a very economically feasible process chain is combined by a research of a model for a reverse logistics chain to see which um, facilities we need where um, to be most economically feasible. The whole uh, process on the purification um, aims to be shown at the end of the project in the kilogram scale um, at the materials APS, PS, PC, and maybe also PA. Next slide, please. And who are we? Uh, we are quite big consortium and have grouped a bit um, the partners along the activities they are doing. So in the recycling part of the project, um, we have covered those waste streams uh, from the construction demolition waste by Volbas. Then we have the VEE stream, um, also covered here with cool rec and relight. Relight is um, taking over by tree. So you saw that partner already in the other projects. 
Then we have two partners who are capable of uh, designing and manufacturing recycling equipment, which is Erema and uh, Machine Fabric Otto Schuten. And furthermore, those partners are uh, su um, supported by research organizations like Kaiga doing the LIPS technology, uh, Centex Bell and Fraunhofer ICT being responsible for the um, extractive extrusion, and uh, the CUNY Logistics University developing the model for the logistics chain. Then in the reuse of those materials, um, the automotive sector, interior sector is covered by Maya. The cycle fiber being responsible for the 3D printed aeronautic parts and DAW being responsible for those um, EPS insulation boards for the building and construction sector. And they are supported by the research organization CIDO for um, environmental friendly flame retardancies. Uh, DCKT being responsible for the um, development and modification of the injection molding grade of the materials for the automotive case. Fraunhofer ICT is here taking the role for the modification of the um, EPS um, um, polymer materials or the polymers polystyrene for the um, insulation boards. And Sandex Bell is developing um, the 3D printing filaments. Furthermore, we have three um, partners looking on more on the overall topics of the project. Um, as said by Esther, the life cycle analysis and the life cost analysis, uh, life cycle cost analysis are very important for the project, and this is carried out by Erwe Energia. OFAM is guiding us through the legal framework in the project, and ITRP, our dissemination and exploitation managers. Next slide, please. So coming to the key results, and I have grouped the, them as well um, along the process chain we are considering. So here in the recycling step, um, exemplary two results where we have already uh, prototypes existing. So on the top right hand side, you see the LIPS prototype at Geiger. Um, in the front, the LIPS device itself, and um, in the back, the yellow box where we have a conveying belt and where we sort the materials on the threshold of 1000 um, ppm promine. And for that, currently we are developing the models um, for the detection. And we are using here um, the uh, VLS methods, so the partial least square regression models, methods to classify the results concerning the concentration. Then on the right hand side, um, in the bottom, you see an extrusion line, a bit longer one than usually used, where we do the extractive extrusion. And currently, we are transforming the patch results, as you can see on the next graph, um, where we have already obtained quite good extraction efficiency is in the patch. Um, these are now transferred concerning the process parameters to the continuous extru um, extrusion. Next slide, please. Then coming to the reuse, we have already here uh, worked out quite, quite a few um, free demonstrators, I would call them, using the non-prominated material from our stream. Um, for the APS, we have made those 3D printing filaments at Centexpel. Um, the left one is the thicker one, the 1.75 millimeter uh, strand, which is very commonly used in the 3D printing industry. But aiming for the aeronautic application, we need also a very fine um, filament. And Tendexpel was able to produce a filament of 0.18 uh, millimeters already for that application. Then we see the CREA part. This is an ejection moldy 2D um, um, part where Maya is um, um, making feasibility tests of, of the process uh, concerning the mechanicals and the aesthetics of that part. And uh, both uh, parameters have already passed the requirements. So already so quite satisfactory, satisfactory uh, results. Then on the right-hand seat, you see these uh, black bubbles. I don't know if you are familiar with that. Um, these are the uh, single particles from which your insulation board on the building is uh, molded from. And what is done is that uh, uh, quite um, dense uh, bulk bead is uh, expanded into a, a desired density. And this is already done um, 
um, at DAV in a two-step process for, for long stored materials, which are quite hard to expand. And those have been molded also to an insulation board to test the insulation behavior. And both parameters are already um, passing all tests. Um, so we are quite confident that we can use that in the process later on. And then uh, the last diagram showing you that um, CDOUT is uh, developing a bunch of different um, new flame retardants packagings where they are using uh, mineral fillers like uh, aluminum trihydride or maxanium hydroxide, also nanoclase or different uh, metallic oxides to provide a tailored um, flame retardancy for the application, um, matching also the mechanical parameters. Next slide, please. And this is on our reverse logistics development. So we have uh, set up the requirements for the creator process and how the logistics should look like. And in the moment, the Kernel Logistics University is developing a model, um, how this fits together. So they are simulating the supply chain and they take into account the location and the size and number of the different recycling plants and what steps are carried out there um, to turn out to best possible economics. So it's a matter of if I do uh, the whole sorting at one place or if I separate it into two, uh, how big uh, volume, um, volumes I have to treat and um, etc. Next slide please. And how is this, um, these results are impacting from the technical point of view, as well as from the social and economic point. So in the technical, um, we are delivering a very precise separation systems for the promine. And uh, we are removing the legacy flame retardants from the polymers. And this will enable um, the increase of the recycling rate. And we have calculated that exemplarily for CURREC for the VEE stream, that we will be able to recover with this technology up to 45% of today's uh, waste fraction they have. So quite, quite a huge amount of that, which is today, as already told by the other speakers, incinerated or landfilled. And this turns, of course, then later on to social and economic benefits. So uh, recovering the petroleum-based materials and reusing them will, of course, make us more independent from those sources from outside Europe and uh, decrease the imports and, and make us more resilient. And um, we, this will carry on to the uh, more circular model for the plastics, especially the thermoplastics. Um, and doing so and installing those plants in Europe, this will of course um, secure also these jobs in that sector. And um, on a longer term, of course, these technologies we have developed can be applied to other waste streams and other applications as well. So all in all, we are of course working on that the recycled plastics are not anymore called as waste, but that they are really a valuable uh, secondary raw material. Next slide, please. And this is um, just the last part, uh, what is still missing. Um, in Creator, we have already um, a quite good, I uh, have a good consortium who is covering the whole value chain, including the logistics. However, if we do one circle with the materials in our tiny world, this won't turn the, um, the circularity in Europe, but we need to collaborate with the other projects and that we are doing already today here. As you have seen, we have similar targets, but we have different approaches. And I think we can all learn from each other today in, the, um, in this framework of the Horizon Results Booster. But we are working on this also in the Plastic Circularity Multiplier, where uh, we have uh, quite a few projects uh, working together on the circularity issues from very different perspectives. But what is really necessary, and this is also something uh, Mohammed already pointed out, we need all the actors from different communities together if we aim for circularity. So really the design for recycling is needed. Um, and therefore we need to take all the communities um, along the value chain with us from the designers to the converters and the recycling communities. 
And then we are, of course, very thankful for the European Commission for the funding we have gained and what we have seen, uh, how much funding has gone, uh, has spent to circular economy topics in the Horizon program already. And we have seen that this is already um, also drafted in the new Horizon Europe program. So we are very happy to continue on these topics together with the partners here. Next slide, please. So I would like to summarize um, just with my contact details. So if you have any remaining questions we can't answer today, don't hesitate to come back to me. And you can, of course, follow our results um, on our homepage and our LinkedIn channel. And here you see as well a picture from Fraunhofer ICT, as Esther already showed. This is at the bottom of that building. She was on the roof of the building with her uh, consortium. Um, this was before the Corona time and we are looking forward to meet physically even maybe this year. Thank you a lot for your attention. Um, I don't know if we have questions already now, Mariana. Thank you, Irma. Very interesting presentation. Uh, very nice pictures uh, as well we are uh, seeing today. Indeed, we have several questions for you. Uh, the, um, the presentation raised very uh, much interest uh, among the people connected today. So uh, the first question is by using lips, you are sourcing different polymers and into blame uh, from, from, sorry, brominative flame retardants. Sorry, because I don't have a technical program. Sometimes it's difficult for me to pronounce those uh, uh, technical words. So again, by using lips, you are sorting different polymers and into uh, brominated flame retardants and non-brominated flame retardant fractions. Is this correct? Uh, if so, what concentration of bromine are you considering to sort these fractions? Yes, uh, this is almost correct. <laughs> Thank you for that question. So I wasn't maybe uh, clear enough on that. So the lips um, sorts on the um, on the chemical species of bromine. So what we do sort is non-bromine and bromine containing. We don't sort different polymers uh, among them. Uh, this is done by other techniques like NER or middle wave NER. Um, you can sort the polymers, but we separate between bromine containing and not bromine containing. And we do um, make those models as I shown in the moment to be able to do that on the threshold of uh, 1000 ppm, which is now in the moment the concentration uh, where you have to incinerate the material or not. Thank you, Irma, for your answer. We have other questions um, again regarding this policy and legislation. What is the main legislation issue uh, in your project for the later exploitation? Yeah, what we have seen in the moment um, that is the uh, waste legislation. Um, which, will, which will cause a bottleneck later on in the exploitation. And I think this was pointed out by Mohammed as well. Um, so um, if we look on the end of waste criteria, um, they are now, um, or the legislation today is covered on national level. And if we are now transporting uh, materials from one country to another, this is a huge problem as some countries do um, classify the uh, recycled polymers as a waste and others as a material and then different uh, legislative uh, thresholds for the material amount um, which is allowed to be transported uh, um, are, are taken into account and if we uh, could agree on uh, end of waste criteria for plastics um, EU wide this would of course make for all of these projects um, the exploitation um, across the borders much easier as we need um, uh, to transport on the one hand the polymer waste coming into the recycling pad but also to transport the uh, recycled polymers from the recycling plants back to the um, later end users. So I think that is the main bottleneck in the moment. Thank you, Irma. Uh, one final question before we move on to the next presentation. Um, this, uh, I think, maybe is a, a common question for all projects, but in this case, we will uh, uh, address uh, this question uh, through this presentation through uh, the answer of Irma. In what category of recycling technologies does Creator allocate itself? Is it a physical or chemical technology? 
Yeah, so uh, we um, differed between physical and chemical technologies, as, as you said, um, and we refer here to a classification what was actually published by the IVV, and they are talking in the circular uh, flooring project later on. Um, we see that the physical um, technologies are those where we have the polymer chain um, uh, being a chain throughout the whole recycling chain, and the chemical uh, technologies are those who are depolymerizing that chain. So therefore, as we are kind of dissolution technology, um, this is still a physical technology. We do remain the whole polymer chain, we do dilute it, and we do remove the, the materials around it, but we don't destroy the material itself. But this is certainly something we could discuss later on as well among the other projects. There is a lot of confusion yeah. on that. that yeah, topic. I, 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 that's, that's why I was saying, uh, I think maybe this is a general question for uh, all the projects. Before we move on uh, to the next presentation, thank you, Irma, very much. Just uh, a quick reminder, uh, there has been one hour uh, since we started this um, webinar. Uh, this session is being recorded, so you, you have to leave because uh, I know you are uh, quite busy, all of you. This session is recorded and will be available uh, on the website of the projects and the YouTube channels. So uh, we will send a, a follow-up email with all those in, informations later. Uh, regarding the next presentation, um, we have Thomas Diefenhardt, Associate Scientist at Fraunhofer IVV, and the next presentation is entitled uh, Circular Flooring, Recycling PVC from Post-Consumer Flooring Waste. Thomas, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mariana. I hope you can all see me um, since I don't see myself in the screen. Um, Thank you for inviting us as well to present our project here. Um, you can switch to the next slide. I apologize in advance for some um, mistakes or if something appears double in the slides, I thought I would present myself um, the slides, but it's not a problem. We'll get through this together. So Circular Flooring, um, the project aims to produce new products from waste PVC floorings and um, to safely treat legacy plasticizers. Next slide, please. The project is um, a project that lasts for four years. It's funded uh, as the other projects under the Horizon 2020 funding scheme. And the coordinator of the project is Dr. Martin Schlummer from Fraunhofer EVV. Next slide, please. The project objectives um, is to enable a circular use of plasticized PVC from waste flooring by developing a recycling process, which eliminates legacy phthalic acid esters um, that are not conformed to the EU REACH directive. It does uh, so by developing a process for the recycling of the legacy phthalic free PVC um, and prevents the PVC thereby from getting landfilled or incinerated, which is what is being done with it at the moment. Um, it aims to demonstrate the circularity of this PVC in flooring and the applicability of the phthalic free plasticizers um, that are being produced from the legacy plasticizers. And um, it wants to assess an environmental health and safety impacts and, of course, the techno economic feasibility of the whole project. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. We have um, 11 partners from five different countries and seven linked third parties, which are. Uh, which is a mixed consortium from um, research institutes, universities, and um, uh, manufacturers uh, of um, PVC. Thank you. Next slide, please. Uh, this one you can jump. It's just a repetition of the one before. Thank you. Um, so the process in general is, um, or the loop we're trying to close, is that the PVC enters um, our loop by being collected from um, the consumers or yeah, it's post-consumer PVC. It is then recycled by the creosote process, which is a solvent-based process I will describe in detail later on. This process, um, though I can already say now, um, separates the legacy phthalate acid esters and the PVC. The PVC is recycled and then brought back into 
new flooring and the, the legacy plasticizers are catalyzed by uh, catalytic hydrogenation and made, um, um, how do you say, are made uh, safe again and then are re-implemented as well into the PVC, into the new floorings um, with additives. The next slide, please, will show um, more in detail our tasks that we have in our project. So we can start from the top uh, where we can see that uh, the post-consumer PVC or end-of-life PVC is collected and sorted. It then gets to the creosol plant where it is recycled by the creosol process. Um, here we have the two streams, the blue one, which is the PVC going back to reprocessing and the plasticizer stream, the yellow one, um, being where the plasticizers are catalyzed um, by hydrogenation and then the safe plasticizers are then again um, brought back into the new floorings, which are then supposed to re-enter the market. Next slide, next slide, please. So the two key technologies are already mentioned are the creosol process and the hydrogenation technology. The creosol process is a solvent-based recycling technology, which enables to these resources to be conserved by mainly separating these two, um, let's say, resources, the PVC and the plasticizers. It uses specific solvent formulations that do not contain hazardous substances as defined by the EU chemical legislation. And the PVC is dissolved from the flooring formulation. It is then precipitated and dried for the reuse. The hydrogenation is a catalytic hydrogenation and yeah, it converts these uh, phthalate esters to safe plasticizer alternatives. Next slide, please. So more in detail uh, for the creosol process, as um, mentioned very fast, it, is, um, it enters uh, the process. The waste enters the process and is solved. It is then cleaned in various cleaning steps, depending on how dirty the, the input material is. Um, impurities are taken out of the, of the polymers. The polymers are then precipitated um, with an antisolvent and are then dried. Even in the precipitation step, um, impurities can be taken out depending on how it is performed. And um, the solvent that is used is, is uh, regained in a closed loop. So it is all, it's never, it's, it's like a closed, um, yeah, it's a closed process basically. And um, the product or the, the finished polymers can be produced as powders, granulates, and as pretty much any uh, tailor-made form. In the PVC industry, the PVC is applied as powder. Therefore, our product is a powder um, as it is produced after, the, after our process. And within this process, a re-additivation or stabilization of the PVC is possible. Next slide, please. The stage of the project at the moment is we just finished the laboratory scale or we just proved everything on laboratory scale and are moving on to the pilot scale um, or pilot plant scale. And next slide, please. For this, we are producing or we, we are building, sorry, a pilot plant, which is uh, almost completed in the building, um, but is not yet filled with all our equipment. So this, this is the stage we are at right now. We are um, building the pilot plant to be able to demonstrate that this process also works on, um, on a larger scale. And since we have proven with our um, partners that it is also economically feasible uh, and worth it, we also have to prove this or want to prove this on a larger scale. Next slide, please. Regarding the results, I'm sorry here, the slides are only very uh, general, I will try to give a little more detail. So in the first place, we um, identified that there is a lot of PVC in the market, around 360 kilotons um, in Europe that can be collected. Um, realistically, only about 80% of that uh, is, like, is available because there's always PVC that is not, um, that you can't, that you wouldn't be able to collect or, or get. Therefore, we're talking about 290 around kilotons of PVC available. And of this, realistically, with current efforts, we said that around 8 to 10 percent, so um, maybe around to 25 kilotons, could be 
recycled with this um, with this technology and are available without um, performing too high efforts or too yeah too high efforts let's say which would then be too expensive and the main countries in which the PVC is available um, are France the UK and Germany the PVC in the last uh, months has been improved by uh, especially the particle size because the tear strength elongation uh, and heat stability were were always good um, characteristics for for it to be implemented into new floors but we had some issues with the particle size since uh, PVC powder is um, very uh, fine powder um, and we are now at a stage where we have powders, uh, particle sizes of below 500 micrometers and um, it, this is around what the industry would accept even though it would be best to even um, uh, have smaller particles which we're trying to to get or to reach and as you can see in the right picture the dark um, the dark uh, sample is the recycled PVC this is a second uh, issue that we are having which is um, which is I think in all recycling uh, industries the case that if we have a mixed input as you can see in the left picture um, the output is going to be dark in color and PVC generally um, has a lot of decorations on the surface. So our PVC could not or will probably not be used for top layers, but only for middle or low layers, since the, the quality and the characteristics are good, but um, it's almost impossible to color uh, the black surface, or it has less uh, applications uh, or less places where you can apply it. Next slide, please. The hydrogenation technology, um, yeah, I, I'm not an expert in this since our partners are doing this, but um, what I can say is that the uh, low molecular weight phthalates are catalyzed and these are limited by the REACH leg legislation and they are converted into cyclohexane decarboxylates, um, which are, or are similar to the DINCH, which is a plasticizer which is applied in very large scale in the market. And um, the, the good thing is that these have little migration characteristics and low toxicity level, as well as a high compatibility um, with the PVC. And um, there is a whole, uh, like there is a, we are not aiming on producing a new, or we're not producing a new phthalate, um, sorry, a new plasticizer by this catalytic hydrogenation, but it is, um, a plasticizer that is already on the market and therefore we hope to not have to um how do you say um do a whole registration new registration um for this plasticizer but this is something we have not yet uh tackled next slide please the advantages of the creosol process as already mentioned are especially that this solvent-based technology separates the substances, in our case, the PVC and the phthalates, uh, the plasticizers, and thereby it makes it possible to retain these resources and to keep them in a circular economy. Um, it uses solvent formulations, as already mentioned, that are not hazardous substances, and um, they, def they therefore do not pose any risk to users or the environment. And um, thereby it helps the EU to reach it, its goals of, of establishing a circular economy in Europe. Next slide, please. The benefits for the European society are a contribution to establishing a circular economy, the reduction in consumption of primary resources, the removal and safe destruction of legacy phthalate, uh, plasticizers from the plastics, and um, recovery of these valuable resources of plastic waste, since up to date, these are only incinerated um, or landfilled, similar to the ones that were also or similar like to the other projects. Um, then the reduction of greenhouse gas emissions and the creation of new business opportunities, since this is um, a field and we are aiming on at the moment in this project, it's aimed at that only the PVC regarding these um, plasticizer, these phthalate esters, 
are um, supposed to be recycled with this technology. It's not aimed at all PVC flooring that has um, plasticizers that are totally fine and legacy free. Uh, therefore, it creates uh, yeah, it creates new business uh, opportunities um, with the circular value chain. Exactly. Next slide, please. This is the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for your attention. And I would be happy to answer any questions. And I also uh, want to encourage you to visit our website um, and to yeah, download the files we have there to see the work in more detail that we can do. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Thomas. You mentioned during your presentation the CREA solve process. I think this is a common uh, process for most of the projects involved today. Uh, there was a comment on the chat by Lane Tanga, expectation for a scale up uh, the CREA solve into demo plant around three years and a full scale plant six years. Uh, I suppose uh, you are uh, concerned uh, um, about the, the, the the exploitation of these technologies in coming into a reality uh, by these demo plants. Yes, uh, sorry, can you repeat yeah, the, what's the part of the question of that comment? Yeah, no, I, 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 I'm going to link that to the following question that uh, the same person, Lane Tenge, um, asked uh, yeah. regarding the technologies you show. Uh, it's just uh, pointing out that the process is a common space for, for most of the projects and that the idea is to uh, yeah. have that process become a reality in a full scale plan uh, in yeah. six years. Uh, for yeah. the question. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, there yeah, sorry to interrupt, Thomas. No, not a problem. Yeah, um, I, I just wanted to say uh, regarding the this technology, it is there are some fields of application where it has already proven to be very um, useful, and therefore the application on larger scale uh, is absolutely true has already um, been established. Let's say, uh, even though it is. Uh, um, something that is not the same for all the fields. Um, now, if we if we talk about the PVC, uh, on a larger scale, the of process has not yet proven that um, for PVC it can work as well, or it works as good as, for example, polystyrene, which, um, which has already been proven, or multi-layer packaging. Um, and therefore, um, we will have to, to first show this in, with our pilot plant but we are um yeah quite confident that it is very it will be successful and uh, yeah thank you but we will us. also um, be happy to present this work when once we have the uh, maybe in one year once we have the pilot plant running and um, yeah exactly thank you uh, we have some questions for you. Uh, probably we won't have uh, the time enough to, to answer them now, maybe on the panelist session, but uh, here is uh, one question for you. Uh, what is the percentage of total additives which need to be incinerated coming from the PVC flooring? The percentage of the additives? Of total additives, yes. Um, I'm not really sure what is meant by the total percentage of additives that need to be incinerated. Um, Maybe we can move uh, just uh, to the next um, question and we can uh, take the time to answer that. So, question. but no, wait, I can, I can try to answer. It's not a problem, Mariana. Um, if I have a, a second. Um, so the, the, the second question I just saw, I just opened the chat. Um, was what is finally the percentage of PVC put back into the market. Um, so our PVC we get, I can at least for sure share that we have um, from the flooring input that we get, we have at around 60% pure PVC. Um, and of this, um, we, of this uh, 60%, we have around 95% uh, that we um, can that we regain and that we reproduce as PVC that can be re-implemented into the floors. So the main issue is that, or from regarding the, the volumes, that already a lot of 
um, input or that the PVC is a very small amount, let's say, if you, depending on how you look at it, but um, that the 60% that is in the old floors is not so, uh, it's not such a great number, let's say, but um, from the 60%, we extract almost all of it. Okay, thank you very much. I think that was uh, quite clear. Uh, there are more questions to, to be answered, as I said before. Uh, I'm afraid we don't have still the time to answer them. Maybe in the panelists and interactive session, we will try to answer them. And if not, uh, as we mentioned before, we uh, will uh, gather all those questions and uh, answer them after the, uh, this webinar session. We will move uh, on to the last presentation now. Thank you very much, Thomas. Um, we will move on to the REACT presentation. REACT is a project addressing the management of white uh, acrylic textiles coming from other awarnings and furnishing. And this uh, presentation will be led by Roberto Manucci. He is a um, multi-sectoral uh, Eran uh, e, uh, department manager of Centro Code. Uh, Roberto, the, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mariana. Um, thank you all. Um, okay, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good morning. Um, I First, I would uh, to thank you, uh, the Horizon uh, Re uh, Results Booster and the uh, NOTOPS project and all other uh, projects uh, to this uh, initiative and to welcome uh, uh, react uh, on this. Uh, really, we are uh, not uh, uh, focused on plastics, but on textiles, uh, even though uh, acrylic fibers that uh, we are uh, working on are a, a kind of plastics, uh, of course. Um, I'm Roberto Vannucci. I'm uh, uh, responsible of uh, multi-sectoral research and innovation department of Centro Cot. Uh, next uh, slide, uh, please. Uh, just a few overview of uh, Centro Cot is a technical uh, textile center located in northern Italy uh, near Milan. And uh, Centro Cot is the coordinator, uh, project coordinator of uh, React. Uh, next slide, please. Thank you. Uh, this is the uh, partnership uh, and some general information about the, uh, the React project. Uh, with the, this um, consortium, we um, try to have the uh, full supply chain, including the closed uh, loop uh, on textile uh, in, a, in a circular way. That means that uh, um, we have a, a partner producer of manufacture uh, of goods, uh, uh, ten um, fabrics for tents for outdoors, that is uh, Para Tempo Text is a, a, a European leader on this sector. Um, then we have uh, um, Centro Cot, uh, Ghent, uh, that uh, in collaboration with the University of Bergamo and uh, with the partnership of uh, Ghent University and the other partner is Soft Chemicals. We are trying to remove chemicals from uh, uh, waste, uh, acrylic waste. Then uh, <clears throat> we have a, a CT in France for the mechanical recycling of the uh, re fabrics removed by chemicals. And uh, yak uh, spinning in uh, Hungary to spin again the uh, the fibers in order to have a, a new yarns for production of new textiles, uh, um, um, even uh, again in, uh, in um, acrylic fiber. Uh, the project uh, is lasting uh, three years. Uh, it's about uh, 3.3 million euros. Next slide, please. Uh, I think that uh, you all uh, know this well-known uh, picture from uh, Ellen McCarton Foundation. This is in order to fix uh, that the, all the uh, huge amount of textile uh, entered into the market um, are more or less 
uh, three quarter, 73 in this uh, slide, three quarter of these are uh, landfilled or, or incinerated. And only 1% of the uh, material, uh, used material, textile material is reused in a closed loop in the same uh, uh, circle in the same uh, supply chain. Uh, as you can see, the, <clears throat> the textile, when we spoke about the te uh, we speak about the style, uh, we are uh, the most are clothes uh, for uh, our normal life, but uh, um, there are also several other uh, um, parts of the textile like uh, accessories uh, and so on, and in particular technical textile for several in sector or for other application uh, in, in human life with specific uh, characteristics. These is, uh, are the uh, acrylic fibers for outdoor awnings, umbrellas, and so on. Uh, next slide, please which is the challenge of uh, <clears throat> the, uh, the React project. Uh, project. We are, uh, uh, as I said, focused on te te technical textiles uh, that are uh, particular technical characteristics uh, that uh, allow these uh, fibers, these uh, acrylic fibers, uh, to be used in particular in awnings, umbrellas, and furnitures for out and furniture for outdoor, um, <clears throat> because uh, uh, there, there are uh, technical characteristics as uh, UV uh, resistance, uh, strength uh, mechanical resistance, uh, and also uh, weather resistance to. Uh, uh, exposure to the to the weather, yeah. Um, more, most, uh, more than ninety percent of the fibers used for this kind of of sectors are made in uh, uh, acrylic uh, fibers. So we focus on these, and uh, <clears throat> around uh, eleven thousand tons of acrylic outdoor fabrics. Uh, are produced uh, each year. Uh, and uh, it is estimated that uh, 2.5 uh, million of awnings uh, are installed in, in Europe. Um, we estimated uh, that the uh, production of uh, uh, 8,000 tons uh, um, uh, are um, go to the west, uh, landfilled uh, the most uh, per year. So we focus uh, on this. Uh, and uh, mm, there are uh, until now not uh, recovered because the, uh, we used uh, some uh, compounds, uh, chemical substances, uh, in order to have uh, um, performance uh, uh, I I perform I long uh, dura with a long duration for several years because the the use is uh, the lifespan of these uh, goods is about uh, uh, be between 80, 10, 15 years. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. Uh, Mm, thanks. Uh, we um, the objective, uh, the goal of uh, uh, React project uh, are to remove uh, uh, at least 90, 95 percent uh, of the chemical substances uh, that are uh, uh, in the in the fabrics. Uh, um, and uh, to treat uh, up to 19% of the uh, impurities uh, uh, obtained. And we want to, as I said at the beginning, to uh, have a, a closed loop uh, producing yarn uh, with uh, um, 
up, uh, up to 100% of uh, uh, recycled uh, uh, fibers. Um, the objective uh, is uh, to reduce the amount of acrylic incinerated or landfilled by 30% uh, at the end of the project. The project is in, the, in its uh, second uh, year. Uh, I can say that uh, we uh, ach already achieved the, the success to remove uh, uh, more than 95% of uh, the chemicals uh, over the fabrics. And uh, so uh, we are approaching with uh, our goals. Um, in addition to the to help or to uh, finalize the sustainability of this sector uh, and this activity, uh, we'll uh, study uh, waste water from uh, uh, the finishing removal in order to recover uh, the products, uh, the products used and. Uh, in this case, uh, reducing the pollutant load of uh, this uh, wastewater. And uh, one of the partner, uh, Soft Chemicals, is also studying a new, uh, more uh, green and sustainable finishing, uh, substituting the hazardous uh, chemicals that are used, uh, are still used. Um, I think that uh, uh, it's all for my for my presentation. Next slide is uh, thank you for uh, your attention. Thank you very much, Roberto, and congratulations for the results you are uh, already achieving in in your project. Uh, we have now our interactive session where we would like to hear all the panelists uh, answering several questions because uh, as we uh, already mentioned before, there are several questions common to, to some of the projects or all of them. And I think it would be good to, to see all the panelists discussing how we address some aspects, aspects uh, common and joint uh, aspects. Before we, uh, we do that, uh, I think um, we have uh, questions um, for you uh, on the chat, um, I see uh, one uh, from Katie Mirarova. Um, we are granting authority and oversee the presenting project. Can I have the floor for two minutes after you take some questions on the last presentation? Um, I don't know if this is possible um, for my colleagues on the technical side to to leave uh, Katie Mirarova to, to ask herself in um, directly. If not, um, we will move or while we wait for that, uh, we will move on to the next question. Um, this is not only for Roberto, but uh, we will uh, take the opportunity uh, for you to uh, explain uh, the first. Um, have you encountered any VOC uh, and other submission from the recycled materials. In other words, does the final product smell like most recycled products? Do your processes reduce polymer odors? I can uh, try to answer. It's not the, the problem of the React project because we remove uh, chemicals, uh, uh, of course, with uh, 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 chemical process, uh, we didn't uh, find uh, anything because uh, any any VOC because uh, uh, the process that we use is uh, um, industrial processes. Uh, that is the formulation in order to remove the chemicals. That is our uh, study, our uh, let's say. Uh, experience uh, results research, and then we uh, use uh, uh, a mechanical uh, recycling for fibers. So we have, I, I didn't uh, perceive any information about VOC, but uh, you have a time to 
uh, eventually uh, repair on this. This is from my side. I know that is not for, my, for the React project, uh, really, this, uh, this uh, question. Thank you very much, uh, Roberto. I, I see now that uh, all our speakers and panelists are switching on their cameras to participate in this interactive session. Uh, I didn't receive an answer regarding the question I um, point out before uh, of uh, Ms. Medarova. Um, I certainly encourage you to uh, do that uh, through the chat if you can uh, to write down your question so we can um, address that with our uh, panelists. Thank you all again uh, for joining uh, this session. Thank you our panelists for participating today. We will uh, move to this um, uh, panelist session, this interactive session. Please uh, continue asking uh, questions through the, through the chat so we can uh, address that with uh, the panelists. There were several questions uh, that we didn't uh, answer before and we will try to address them all uh, now. The first question is for- Mariana, Esther. Mariana, Mariana. Yes. So just uh, for uh, uh, Katie, I think she asked just the floor to say some words from the European Commission. And before we going now to the, to the questions, I uh, would say let's give Katie the floor and uh, give her uh, some, uh, yeah, the, the opportunity. Yeah, is there, uh, 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 because well, you're funding all these projects. So that is very good. Yes, uh, certainly. Um, well, we try to uh, solve this uh, this problem because on the technical side, I already ask uh, the people managing to uh, try to give her uh, permission to address those questions. Uh, well, we uh, try to solve this technical um, problem and allow her to to um, uh, ask her questions directly uh, to the panelists. Uh, we uh, will try to answer them the questions and, and then move uh, to uh, Ms. Medarova um, herself to, to ask uh, the, the to uh, ask their questions herself. Uh, the first question then um, will be for, for you, Esther. Uh, there was a question on the chat regarding the target of uh, bromine reduction to uh, 0.4%. What is your concentration limit based on that? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for, for asking this question. Well, as we, uh, as I already pointed out, we have to start uh, with, uh, uh, of we're starting with 12% of, uh, of bominated flame retardants in our test samples, and we have to go back to uh, 360 ppm of the bominated flame retardants. So that is that re reduction that we have to do. And uh, we are almost there, not, not completely, but uh, all, almost. Thank you, sir. I think we can hear now. Uh, Ms. Medarova uh, is only in just uh, she has to raise her hand. And now I think if she unmutes herself, she can speak uh, out loud and ask the, the questions uh, she wanted to ask. Yes, hello. Can you hear me? <clears throat> out and clear. Yeah, thank you so much for this opportunity. I just wanted to, to say a few words, actually, there are no questions. It's um, mostly to thank the projects for coming together for this meeting and for these presentations, and to thank the uh, Result Booster for organizing this dissemination event, because um, as the projects know, uh, we in the executive agencies that are the granting authority for all these projects have been reinforcing the message about clustering and optimizing synergies and complementarity between projects, um, especially in the plastics field. And therefore, this is an important uh, event for us. And uh, exactly as in the past, uh, but also in the future, we'll continue also to bring these projects together. And um, what uh, is new, I would like to announce here for the participating projects, but also for your participants at the webinar, is that uh, under the 2020 calls for proposals under Horizon 2020, we have another set of uh, 10 projects uh, that are working also in the field of plastics, recycling, reuse, and decontamination, mostly related to multi-layer packaging, but still I think most of the technologies that are going to be um, tested and validated are similar or the same even. 
Um, so it's very important to yeah um, keep track also of uh, all the new projects that are now starting. And for your information, we will do a joint kickoff meeting of these projects in September, which will be accompanied with a clustering meeting as well. So um, we will invite you uh, as well. Um, and uh, last but not least, uh, remember that uh, new opportunities are coming under Horizon Europe program and uh, the new calls were just recently launched. Several of them are directly related to plastics, innovation in value chains, um, also electronics, textiles and other related fields. So uh, check the portal and uh, to invite you cordially to our information days that are taking place on the 6th and 7th of July when more information about the upcoming topics will be provided and on the 9th of July there is also a brokerage event where maybe you can also come together and look for more partners and then possibly find opportunities for working more together in the future. So with that, uh, thanks so much for giving me the, the floor. Congratulations one more time on your progress and for coming together and uh, looking forward now to the discussion. Thanks. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Medalova. Um, this is an interesting uh, point that she raised. Uh, all these projects uh, here are collaborating uh, on the Horizons Results Booster, but uh, obviously there are more initiatives collaborating as well together. Uh, I certainly invite you to visit the Plastic uh, Circularity Multiplier website where most of those projects, if not uh, all of them, are collaborating together to find um, and, and solutions for those uh, plastics uh, recycling challenges that we are addressing today. We will continue now uh, with those questions that weren't answered um, before, if you uh, all agree. Uh, I think this is the question for Thomas again. Um, this is a question from Tom Carries. Uh, we have regularly seen in the past that the substitute of a regulated substance becomes regulated later on also. Example, Penta BDA, Deca BDE, uh, DBDP. Uh, what is the lookout uh, for the lactate you produce by hydrogenation? Are you not concerned this will happen? Thank you uh, for the question. Um, yeah, it's a really good question and also really um, yeah, thought through because of course we are aware of this and I think um, it can happen because it has happened in the past that also these, um, uh, how do you say, these, these, um, this product that we are producing, these plasticizers that are now so-called safe maybe in the future will be uh, classified as non-safe uh, legacy plasticizers. And um, then we will have to react in another way. The good thing is that um, through this creative process, we are not dependent on this hydrogenation in the sense that, um, first of all, we are separating these two resources. For now, we can call them resources because both of them, because also the plasticizers can be reused if hydrogenated. Um, it can be that in the future, we are not going to be allowed to hydrogenate the plasticizers anymore. And we will only be using the, the PVC as resource. Um, for sure, I think that is one, I think half of our answer, because that means that we can, um, yeah, the, the PVC will always be able to reuse and it will somehow have to be recycled. And, and so far we don't have any other a uh, better alternative than this um, solvent-based technology, uh, as far as I'm concerned. And um, and therefore, it gives us like a small uh, outlook because the, the, the plasticizers do not have to um, uh, be recycled and re-implemented. The plasticizers can also be uh, safely uh, destructed. That is also, there are other alternatives. They can be, um, chemically, the chemical reactions that take place there can also be changed. Um, the, yeah, therefore, there is, I think, a lot of um, space we can play with there. But I think it's a very uh, good question to keep in mind because uh, this can for sure happen. Thank you, Thomas, uh, for your answer. Uh, we will address now 
uh, questions for all the panelists. Maybe we, we can take uh, uh, the link, uh, just uh, raise your hand and unmute yourselves and maybe you can answer uh, those questions. Uh, there's a question uh, uh, for the projects, for all the projects using solvent-based technologies for uh, waste electronical uh, and electrical equipment, C uh, and D, uh, W and ELV waste. Is it also suitable for separating and recycling wire and cables mixtures? There is a question from some of you. Uh, I don't know who wants to take the lead to answer those, that question. I think Irma raised her hand. Yeah, I can maybe start on that. Um, yeah, for sure, the dissolution technologies, they are dependent on the uh, material quality we are getting in, in source of uh, sense of uh, the waste. It has to be uh, um, quite poor in, in, uh, in the polymer. We are, we are um, remo uh, purifying as this polymer is melted. Um, so the dissolution step takes a place at the melted polymer and there we, of course, we can treat polymers with a similar melting temperatures. But um, looking on the cables, and I think this refers to PVC cables, um, this will be quite, uh, quite difficult, but maybe circular flooring has um, uh, more details on that um, if it's on PVC. Maybe the, um, the participant can uh, give more details on which kind of cables they are looking at. Maybe I can uh, just uh, add uh, some uh, words to Irma. So I think you explained it already quite uh, quite clear, Irma. And uh, what I also would like to stress is that for each uh, polymer, you need uh, different conditions. So the type of solvent can be different, the process can be different, uh, you, you, the, uh, the components that have to be removed. So uh, that is that you need a dedicated process for, for, each, uh, for each plastics. Uh, but uh, in principle, the dissolution technology is able to doing that for different types of plastics. So uh, that is just uh, for, for plastic to be cleaned. We are now focusing on ABS, ABS and HIPS, but our, um, our goal is to do that for, for more types of, of plastics. So we have to look then what has uh, yeah, the best impact also for the European Commission for the next focus on the, on the polymers. Yeah, maybe I can add something uh, to this as well, since we we worked with this um, with this Kresov process and also on other materials and other projects. I remember where we had um, basically uh, Katie also um, just mentioned it. There are other projects where multi-layer packaging are um, are also using this technology, and um, there is. Um, I remember we had a project with aluminium foils that are used for packaging and they have um, a PE layers uh, or PP layers uh, on top of that foil and that is not a problem to separate the plastic from the cable wire or anything, any metal, let's say. Um, therefore, it is possible. I think the biggest issue is uh, the cost because, of course, this technology is more expensive than um, let's say like uh, sorting or uh, shredding or or these kind of technologies thank you thomas i think uh, it was uh, clarified that they were referring to pvc and i think irma would like to say something out loud mm -hmm. um um, I, I don't think so, but uh, yes, uh, it was clarified by Sophie. Thanks a lot for, for that um, a clarification. And I agree totally. Um, we need to look in detail um, what, what to do with the cables. This is an issue coming up. It's a huge amount coming from the construction sector. And definitely there is no solution for the package yet. But this is, I think, when we have sold out these uh, tackles we are having now, uh, this is the next step to take to look on those multi-material solutions there. Thank you. Thank you to all of you for uh, all the, those answers. We have uh, another question. Um, in the case of plastic parts uh, are painted or coated with a metallic layer, for instance, in electrical uh, household appliances, Will some of those advanced recycling technologies be needed to properly recover the materials? 
or are currently mechanical recycling solutions able to properly recycle those materials? I don't know if uh, you would like to answer that question. Maybe someone would like to raise. Uh, Esther, I think uh, you're muted. Yes, thank you, Mariana. Just, just to start, uh, these are typically the impurities uh, that we have all to deal with. So plastics are contaminated with all types of impurities, and one of them is, is, is coatings. So uh, that is uh, when you're looking now for the plastic we cleaned, we, we started with test samples and we go now to real life uh, samples to check how the process worked with real life samples. And then typically uh, uh, coatings, but also all types of other impurities, uh, they have to be removed in, 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 this, uh, in this process. And uh, Plus to be cleaned, uh, used uh, several absorption technologies to remove uh, those components that we do not want uh, in the end product. Thank you, Esther. I don't know if uh, the rest of the panelists would like to say something. If not, we can just move to the next question. There is uh, something that we have uh, all addressed uh, uh, in the presentation, that is uh, the, uh, the implementation of new policies regarding end of waste uh, circularity uh, policies. Uh, we uh, spoke about the REIT um, current uh, policy. Um, there is a question uh, regarding the policy recommendations. Some of you indicate that the end of waste criteria in Europe is an issue. Did some of you realize a benchmark of how end of waste criteria are applied in Europe countries? Actually, to say it from plus to be cleaned, uh, we haven't looked into detail uh, into detail yet. So. Uh, uh, but uh, we know, of course, that the uh, that the end of, uh, uh, of waste criteria that, that that is an issue, and there are different uh, criteria in Europe. So, um, um, but actually, uh, we have to comply uh, for this project. We have to comply with the REACH uh, legislation. So we're really uh, looking at um, at the technology solving there the, the problems, and we ask the policy, uh, yeah, the policy to. Uh, check or to solve those uh, issues with the end of waste criteria. So I think this is typically, uh, yeah, questions that uh, should be taken up by the uh, by the policy and not by the individual uh, project. Furthermore, Mariana, I, I saw also a question in the chat, and it, it was already partly answered. But I think that it's nice discussing that here yeah, is uh, if investors are uh, willing to invest in these type of technologies. And I think it's it's nice to also to see for the opportun opportunities that to see the panelists here in here. Yeah. Uh, before we we move on to that, uh, I don't know if uh, Irma raised uh, her hand. Uh, I don't know if you would like to, to move on to, to the, uh, the topic that Esther just uh, raised, or should we uh, answer first that uh, questions regarding the policy recommendations? I had just a, a, a comment on that um, end of waste criteria. So this is um, not applied on European level yet for the, for the polymers, and this is the issue in the moment. They are applied at national level and, for example, in Germany, even at government level in the in the single Bundestag. So it's really a matter to act there jointly in, at the EU, EU level. Um, maybe to continue a bit on, on the next question on the uh, how the end users are going to invest, um, how willing they are to invest in, in the materials. I think, yes, they are. Um, certainly in the moment we have an um, economic situation where polymers are wanted, but I don't uh, see that this is long, long staying. Um, in the moment we have a lack of materials on the market, but um, when we are looking on the policies for the, uh, for the um, reduction of uh, petroleum-based materials, they are still quite low cost, so uh, we need to um, tackle that issue also from the policy wide so we have to have a certain price for those materials recycled materials to be able to run the processes 
but certainly yes i think all the recyclers i've been in contact with they are looking forward to new technologies and to uh, enhance the um the processes and i think um it's quite impressive also how many of those are already participating in these projects and they have an own contribution on these projects as well so um, yes, I'm sure <laughs> there is a willingness, uh, but it takes still some time. To, we need to show first results. Thank you. I don't know if you would like to say something. I see Muhammad unmuted uh, himself. Yeah, yeah. I, I just wanted to add to uh, add to what uh, what Irma just just mentioned. I think uh, recyclers are really uh, looking for new opportunities. Um, looking into the different consortiums and, and and the companies that we have been talking to they are really looking out for the new opportunities the investment point of view is a, is a little bit intricate here uh, investors they look for long term guarantees you know they uh, tom caris raised a very important point that what you consider now as you know uh, legal or you know fine the next day you can you can see that it will turn out to be as a non you know uh, non relevant or additive or something that needs to be removed so that creates a little bit of uh, lack of trust for the investors so i think from the legislation's pers perspective i think that is also very important that that you have uh, long term policies and uh, that gives much more confidence to the to the investors in investing new uh, new businesses Thank you, Mohamed. Um, I saw Esther unmuted herself. Yes. yes well, actually, I agree with uh, both Irma and Mohamed. I, I was also, um, I'm also, yeah, uh, praying for long-term stability uh, uh, for the field for, for recycling. And uh, in addition, I would like also to point out that um, the cost of the uh, plastics uh, made of, uh, of virgin oil is actually far too low because we do not pay the uh, the cost uh, due to the uh, uh, environmental burden and uh, actually when you are going to look for the uh, for the price uh, including the in environmental burden for the virgin plastics they are then uh, what you see is that they are higher than than for the recycled plastics uh, including then the uh, the environmental uh, uh, impact and uh, therefore that there should also be i would pray for some price leveling between the virgin plastics and the recycled plastics uh, to include also the environmental burden uh, in in that and that it, it will be a story of what from longer term but we have already to think about it and how to do that and uh, make a better competition between the uh, plastics from virgin oil and the plastics uh, the recycled plastics thank you i think thomas uh, unmuted himself one last uh, words uh, from thomas and uh, before we wrap up because we only have two minutes left before uh, having to close this session. So, Thomas. Uh, All right. You... Sorry, I just wanted to add in also another another argument or another um, point, which was basically just that. Um, um, no, but thank you for the other points. I think they were super super useful and they're all right. Um, I just I just uh, wanted to share that I think for from an investor's point of view um, or maybe before. Uh, I see also a really big growing interest from the investor side, um, from some investors that also are, yeah, that are interested in this production. I think one thing that was helpful, and if people here are listening and interested, they can look up polystyrene loop, which is basically a, um, is basically this technology um, applied to polystyrene used from construction and demolition waste. And uh, it's a plant that has been uh, opened, like uh, there was like at a grand opening a week ago. And um, there you can see that it's growing. I think one point that Irma pointed out, I think during her presentation is the fact that it's difficult to ship these plastics because they are uh, from one country to another because they are characterized as hazardous substances um, in some countries and therefore, an investor also needs the guarantee, of course, there will always be waste, but he needs a lot of uh, quantity to, to recycle. Um, so he needs uh, also the guarantee that he can maybe look in other European countries to buy his uh, waste or resources instead of um, 
his own country only um, if he needs a couple of thousands of, of tons a year. And um, yeah, I think that's also a very important point regarding the, the legislation that uh, it should be more easy to ship these, um, these goods if they are intended to be recycled in a decent way. Um, yeah, that's only just a point I wanted to throw in there. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas. I'm afraid we have to, to uh, close now the session. Uh, we have a question for you before you leave. Uh, you can take uh, a couple of minutes to answer that question and to uh, express uh, the degree of satisfaction on the presentations today if you were interested in what was uh, shown by the speakers. Uh, to the speakers, thank you very much for taking the time uh, to present all your uh, wonderful results from your projects and the, the work you've done so far and the technology that is going to be probably the future for this circularity uh, um, challenge that we all are addressing these days. Um, I think we are re it's already receiving some uh, uh, answers to those questions. Um, you, uh, thank you very much uh, for joining us today. Uh, this was a session um, organized and led by the Eurasian uh, Results Booster. As I said before, uh, I encourage you to follow uh, all the projects on the social media channels and websites to contact the, uh, the panelists uh, through the email addresses that they um, provided and uh, to check out uh, the website of the Plastic Circularity Multiplier where uh, more uh, joint actions will be carried out uh, to join forces to address the uh, challenge of uh, plastic recycling. Thank you all very much uh, for today. I hope to see you again in the coming session. Uh, it was great to having you all uh, online. Thank you very much. See you next time. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, Mariana. Bye-bye to all. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Lang.